how to balance out a stellium. That's what we're going over in this video. A stellium in astrology is a group of some astrologers say three, some say four or more planets in a sign in your natal chart. Or there can also be a stellium by house, which would be, uh, if you're not using whole sign houses, uh, a group of three or four planets in a house. Sometimes you will have one, but not the other. Uh, so that is the definition of stellium. It does not include points in the chart, so it's not going to include Black Moon Lilith. It's not going to include the North Node, because any kind of aspect pattern, and stellium is a sort of an aspect pattern in a way, although it's a little different because you can have planets in the same sign that don't technically make aspect to each other. They're just in the same sign. Um, anyway, the point is that any aspect pattern, if you're truly using the traditional definitions, do not include points in the chart. They don't include the ascendant, the midheaven. They don't include the nodes because those are points in space. Uh, or Chiron, because Chiron is technically uh, not a planet. Although I think Chiron is important and I use Chiron. So moving on now to what is a stellium, how to balance it, and what you need to know about this. Stellium is that three or four planets in a sign. Uh, I don't personally care. You know, I'm not really, um, it, to me, it doesn't matter whether your three planets in that sign are defined as a stellium or not. To me, what matters is, uh, are they working for you or do you need to balance them? And so rather than getting stuck on the technicality of let's argue over what house system or let's argue over what technically constitute a stellium, let's just talk about what it means and how you can fix it. So a stellium, again, is three or more planets in a sign. This is not always good or bad because it really depends on a lot of things like whether the planet in the sign is harmonious in and of itself, um, whether that planet in that sign makes aspect to other things, whether there's a planet in the chart that makes maybe a sign-based aspect to that stellium that is positive or challenging, right? So do you have a planet that's squaring all those planets? Do you have a planet that is trining all those planets? That's going to also make a difference. And another thing that will make a difference is what houses the planets in the stellium rule. But we're going to uh, just kind of bypass all of those technical things. If you want to get into all the technicalities, definitely book a reading with me. We can look at every single one of these things to really delineate the actual energy of your stellium and what each planet inside that stellium means. However, because this is a general reading, we can't really get that detailed. Uh, and also right now, readings are 50% off, so you can click the link below if you want to book that. If you are watching this after the sale, you can get on my email list to be notified of all future sales I do. So uh, back to what is a stellium, how to balance it. You can think of a stellium as a bunch of energy in that sign. So if you ha can watch the sun sign for that sign, let's say we'll just use the example of a Scorpio stellium for this video. Uh, it could be in any other sign, but we're just going to use that to talk about how it's going to show up. And you can apply these things uh, to your stellium regardless of what sign it's in. If you have a Scorpio stellium, it's like a lot of you is Scorpio, right? Each planet represents a part of ourselves, right? The sun is our ego, the moon being our feelings. Uh, I'm simplifying this. Mercury being our communication, uh, Venus being how we receive, Mars being how we act, what we want. Uh, and, you know, those are like the main ones uh, for our personal planets, Uh the other planets matter, but the other planets I don't see as parts of self the way that personal planets are. So when you have planets in a stellium, you're going to be more like that sign, even if it's not your sun or moon. Even if you have Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn in the same sign, you're still going to be a lot like that energy. And this is one of the reasons people sometimes don't relate to their sun sign. I have a video on that is because um, they have a lot of planets in another sign. They have a stellium in a sign that isn't their sun. So what you can do about this stellium is just know that whatever that sign is, you're going to be a lot like that sign in a lot of areas of life. If you have Mercury, you're going to think like a Scorpio. If you have Venus, you're going to think like a Scorpio and replace this with whatever sign your stellium is. So just know that 
um, it makes you a lot like that sign and you might relate to just the energy of that sign in general. So if someone with a Scorpio stellium will probably be mysterious, um, maybe kind of obsessed with whatever house that thing is in their life. So if they have like a Scorpio third house stellium, they'll be obsessed with their own mind, (laughs) how they think. And, you know, getting to the bottom of how other people think and how they communicate and how other people communicate like they won't be able to let go because that's an, a natural um, gift or curse of Scorpio, depending on how you look at it. Uh, so basically, you're a lot like that sign and you can look into what that sign means on its own and you will probably relate a lot to even the sun sign in that sign, even if your sun isn't in that sign because it's such a strong energy in your life. Now, there are planets that will mitigate this. Let's say you have Saturn there. Let's say you have Pluto there. Those two especially, uh, or even Chiron. Chiron's not a planet, but they still, those planets in the same sign as a stellium can have a dampening effect or a constricting effect. So then you have all this Scorpio energy that hasn't, isn't, doesn't know where to release. Um, so the first thing you want to do if you have a stellium is figure out if it's functioning well for you. Is it working for you? Are you, do you have an imbalance? You may not. If you have Venus and Jupiter and the sun and the moon in your stellium, you're probably going to be just fine because you got all the good planets there. And that's probably going to be a really good area of life for you. If you have Pluto, Uranus, Saturn, Neptune, <laughs> um, you know, those ones in particular, even Chiron, even though Chiron's not a planet, those ones, again, can have more of a challenging, can have more challenging effects um, based on just how they're affecting the energies. Um, so that being said, what do you do? What do you do now that you have a stellium? So number one is determine whether you ha- feel like you have a balanced amount of that energy or where it's too much or not enough. If you have a stellium, 90% of the time, it's going to be too much of that thing. You're going to be only focused on that thing. It'll be hard to do the opposite thing. So you can look to the sign and house. So let's go back to our example of a Scorpio third house stellium. The opposite sign is Taurus and the opposite house is the ninth house. So Scorpio third house stellium is going to be obsessed with how they think and learning new things and getting short pieces of information but they might have a harder time doing ninth house things. They might have a harder time getting out of their local environment. They might have a harder time, um, with bigger concepts, you know, having faith. Uh, they might, uh, really, really be obsessed with their own way of thinking. And, you know, they might struggle with the opposite energy, which in this play- case is Taurus energy of self care, taking care of the body, having enough food, enjoying your life, making money, being stable. Um, Scorpio, although it is fixed, it tends to, to gravitate more towards drama, uh, trauma. <laughs> and I'm laughing cause I, I know this in my own life. Um, drama, trauma, conflicts, you know, challenges, uh, toxic people, uh, getting caught up in like, uh, power struggles is a very Scorpionic thing. Uh, things that are below the surface and just, uh, unpleasant aspects of life, really. So what you can do is that the easy way to deal with a stellium, first of all, figure out whether it's overactive or underactive just by looking at, do I act to Scorpio? Do I act to, and then fill in the blank for the sign? Um, do I act to, and then fill in the blank for the house? Am I obsessed with this thing? Do I put all my energy into one thing that's represented by this sign or this house? Two, then once you've decided if it's overactive or underactive or somewhere in between, we're going to assume for this video that is overactive. If it is not overactive, if you don't find that you're doing this thing too much or that it's problematic, then you probably don't need this video and you're probably just fine. Um, but if it is overactive, there is one really simple way to balance out a stellium and that is try to be like the opposite sign. So it's that simple. It is that simple to balance it out. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't have to think about, you know, how am I acting like a Scorpio and how is it a problem and how am I obsessed with my own thoughts? And and the, the act of changing this may not necessarily be easy, but the way to balance the stellium 
in that, in terms of that is to put a ton of energy and it will feel probably more challenging the more planets you have in the stellium to do the thing of the opposite sign and house. So now you can think about, um, let's say you had a fourth house stellium and it doesn't matter what sign. Well, you might want to be at home all the time. You might be a homebody and you might have to put a ton of energy to balance that out and like go out into the world or go have a career or have a role in life or, you know, like just be seen in public, right? Because the 10th house is the most public place. You might really love being at home, staying in bed, doing things from home, working from home. Uh, so that's an example of a stellium that you may or may not need to balance out. You might be like, no, I like working from home. I'm cool. But it's when you don't like the effects of that concentration of energy. Okay, so that's how to balance out a stellium. Let me know if you have questions about that below. And you can also check out another video I have on your stellium through the houses. Uh, It kind of goes into what each stellium through the houses means. So uh, check that out for more. And I will see you guys in the next video.